This is the story of Joe Con Guild, a remarkable Tennessean who led a most interesting life during the 19th century. It's the story of his home, Rosemont in Gallatin, Tennessee, which has stood through centuries of everyday wear and tear and survived the ravages of civil war. You'll discover why the Rosemont Restoration Foundation Incorporated seeks your support in preserving this historic landmark, a landmark which reminds us of days long past and protects the memory of the great man who lived here. Let's step back in time to 1813. Josephus Kahn Guild, only 10 years old, is about to begin an important journey from his log cabin home at the headwaters of Bledsoe's Creek. Days before his mother died of milk poison, now his father. Young Joe alone must find help for a proper burial. Desperate to reach his uncle's home in Cairo, 20 miles away, Joe loses his way in a storm but by chance meets Abram, an aged pioneer slave out possum hunting, who comforts and leads the child to Cairo. Walter Guild receives a decent burial. Joe has faced and successfully overcome his first major challenge. It was this sort of courage and determination that would propel Joe Con Guild into becoming a great attorney, soldier, politician, turfman, jurist, author, and builder of Rosemont. We see him here, a success at midlife. By this age, he had become the product of many life-shaping events. My uncle died in 1820. I was then thrown upon my own resources and had to become self-reliant. I concluded to make law my profession. His uncle's friend, Andrew Jackson, was a significant role model. In 1821, at the age of 19, Guild completed a year's apprenticeship in the Sumner County Circuit Court Clerk's Office. He then walked from Gallatin to Nashville to finish his legal education. Guild observed attorneys for hours practicing at the Davidson County Courthouse before selecting Ephraim Foster, one of the state's leading litigators, as his tutor. The next decade of Guild's life was spent building a successful law practice in Gallatin, first with his longtime friend Bailey Payton, then with other members of the local bar. Guild Payton would become one of the most prominent law partnerships in Tennessee. Joe Con Guild and Bailey Payton had more in common than just law. Both had a deep love for horses. Joe's first love was the thoroughbred. Horse breeding appears to have been the main function of the Rosemont Plantation. Guild actively ran his horses in all major races, from New Orleans to Mobile to Louisville. Two horses stand out as his favorites. Hiawatha was one. Jack Malone, the other. Paintings of these horses proudly hang at Rosemont today. The original style can also be seen. In addition to being a successful equestrian and attorney, Guild would become an important legislator. He was elected to the State House of Representatives in 1833, which was then meeting in the Davidson County Courthouse. Guild was a resourceful master of the spoken word. One of his most notable arguments came in his opposition to the Indian Bill, which would lead to the removal of the Cherokee Nation to Oklahoma. The Trail of Tears, as this became known, prompted Guild to deliver these words. Shall Tennessee crush this people, blot out their political existence, drive them from their last retreat, a country which they hold dear to their hearts, upon whose bosom the bones of their fathers, their friends, and their children repose, to seek an abiding place in foreign lands? As a Tennessean, I answer no. Years later, despite his strong opposition to the Cherokee removal, Guild actively participated in the Seminole campaign, which was waged in the Deep South. Guild served as judge of the law court in Nashville from 1870 until 1878 
but began his career as a jurist in 1860 when elected chancellor for Tennessee's 7th Chancery Division. In 1861, this term was discontinued as federal troops occupied Gallatin. The nation found itself torn by the strife of civil war. The war would take its toll on many Tennessee families, including the guilds. Andrew Johnson was the Union military governor of the state. For years, Johnson had been a friend of Joe Guild. He had even been a guest at Rosemont. But this was a time when friendships were put aside. And in 1862, Johnson had Guild arrested as a Southern sympathizer. Guild was charged with treason, along with his friend and fellow horseman, William Giles Harding of Bellmead Plantation. The two were imprisoned at Fort Mackinac, Michigan. Six months later, Guild was released after taking an oath of allegiance to the United States of America. Guild's eldest son, George, was away serving in the Confederacy. In 1864, George, near Carthage, decided to visit his family at Rosemont. The visit would be no easy task. Fort Thomas had been constructed in Gallatin by Union engineers to protect the strategic l and rail line, and Union pickets were set up just 100 yards from Rosemont. George was compelled to take the chance. Years had passed, and he had yet to see his infant son. This he wanted most of all. After passing the Tollgate House and crossing over the Bledsoe Creek Bridge, George reached Rosemont at dawn. He slipped up the back stairs. Then, crawled to his mother's room for safety. Fearful that his young son would give away his presence, George was only able to see him momentarily through a window from his room. Quietly he had come, quietly he left to complete his responsibilities with the Confederacy. Years later, George Guild would become mayor of Nashville. These and many other vivid scenes of 19th century life are depicted in George's book, Fourth Tennessee Cavalry Regiment. In addition, Judge Guild has left us a treasure of Tennessee history in his book, Old Times in Tennessee. The book serves as an eloquent, factual record of politics and major events during Guild's life and describes the customs and manners of the day. Just as these books give a glimpse at days long past, so it is with Rosemont. Rosemont is one of the finest examples of the Greek Revival style of architecture in Tennessee. The two-story brick house is constructed in three two-story sections separate buildings united by a wide double recessed porch across the front with verandas and open galleries running between the different sections for entryways to the various rooms. Construction began in 1828 and took six years to complete by slave labor. Rosemont was situated on a 500 acre plantation. The front of the house was landscaped like a park with a rose garden north of the house. Through the vision and generosity of Miss Ellen Weems, the city of Gallatin accepted the challenge to place Rosemont in the public domain as a multi-use facility for all people. Rosemont is such a wonderful old house. I never have seen a place like it uh, in my life, the way it's planned. And um, it's always been lived in by the same family. That's a unique feature since the early 1830s. It would be such a great investment for Gallatin because unless a group of people get together and do something about it, I'm afraid it just might be lost, which would be terrible. And I think it can be very useful to the citizens of Gallatin to have a nice, place to gather and to meet, and nice for weddings and the wedding receptions. And um, I just think it would be a great thing 
uh, thought not only the beauty and historic value, but for the uh, meetings and conventions and things like that. Oh, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life when I heard that they were meeting to do something about restoring this place. It's always been home, and I just thought, well, oh, that if I could just, if, I, if they could just do that while I was living. Of course, I don't know whether I'll be living when they finish it, but I'll know, and that will just mean so much to me. To preserve this property for the present and future generations, we need your help. Your active support and financial contributions will make the difference in protecting this historic landmark, which does remind us of days long past and of the great Tennessean who lived here.